Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, I interview Kyle from Ohio. He has an interesting story to share with all of us on the show tonight. He was hunting for coyotes in Ohio when he noticed he was being pursued by an unknown creature. As he was being pursued by the Sasquatch, he began to notice a fog rolling in. They say the hardest thing a hunter has to deal with is making a bad shot on an animal, causing it to suffer. But in reality, unknown to most hunters and people around the world, the hardest thing a hunter has to deal with is coming in contact with a cryptid creature. When you wound an animal, you learn and come back stronger, hoping not to make the same mistakes. But when you become the prey and you are now on the dinner menu, it will change your outlook on the forest forever. Many hunters who have encountered a cryptid creature dare to never step foot in the forest ever again. The reality of Sasquatch living in the forest will certainly change the heart and mind of any hunter who steps into its boundaries. Even if you are not a hunter, cryptids are being seen in forested areas surrounded by homes and civilization. Unless you live in the city with nothing but buildings and highways around you, you are vulnerable to experience this phenomenon even if you live five minutes out of town. This Bigfoot experience seems to line up with the past reports shared by hunters and outdoorsmen alike. Alright guys, let's dive into this next Bigfoot encounter from Ohio here on Sasquatch Theory. Kyle, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good. Doing good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, absolutely. Kyle, you had an experience while coyote hunting, and um, if you would, guide me through that experience and just give as many details as possible and also tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. So my name is Kyle. I am uh, Central Ohio. Uh pretty much dead center of Ohio. Uh, spent most of my life in the woods. I've done, you know, about anything you can hunt in Ohio. I have hunted. I've been out of state hunting. Um, when I was, you know, I, started, I shot my first deer when I was 12 uh, and been hooked ever since. Uh, mm -hmm. My ex my experiences started, I don't know, back I don't know, probably 10 years ago. Um, I've had several times where I've actually walked to my deer stand uh whether it be you know typically it happens in the morning uh I, i'll walk to my stand uh and usually when i walk you know there's there's noises there's something making noises uh i've had several incidents where you know get back to the stand and it, like as soon as i'd enter enter the woods to walk to the stand um i've actually had this overwhelming sense of I guess being watched uh the one time that it that really stands out when i was younger uh i i was walking walking to my stand it was shotgun season and i heard something and i didn't pay no attention to it you know it's i mean you're hunting so it could be you know you could spook a deer or anything uh and i was walking to the stand and i had this sense that you know something's watching me something's following me and i just this overwhelming and i mean it was to the point that yeah, it was it, it felt so intense that it was hard to focus on anything else i mean it was just very very intense so i get about halfway to my stand and uh i hear something i, I look over you know it's dark can't see nothing something come through the woods i don't know what it was uh it, it was crashing uh breaking stuff it didn't make i, I couldn't hear any like grunting or any type of noise uh, you know vocalization wise but this was not a deer it was coming to me 
um, it was coming through a big thicket of pines and it was, it was extremely, it, whatever this was, it was heavy and it was strong because it was breaking stuff that I, I don't think I could break. Um, and it, it, very, very intense. It got within, I don't know, I'm going to say 50 yards of me. And this is early in the morning. I ended up standing in that spot until daylight uh, and ended up leaving and I never went back. The sounds, it was, you know, with, with the feeling of being watched, uh, just this overwhelming, I mean, it was overpowering. You couldn't focus on anything else. It was, it was just unbelievable. Uh, that was probably my first experience. And I never really put, you know, with, uh, say a Sasquatch or anything, I never really put that with in that category. Um, but being that I'm in Ohio, you know, we don't have bears. We don't have stuff here that, uh, is capable of doing what this thing did. I mean, it was, it sounded, it sounded like a, like a tornado coming through the woods. I mean, it, it made all kinds of noise, breaking stuff, um, aggressively, uh, you know, coming, coming to me. And I stopped, I, I aimed the gun that direction, but of course, you know, I'm not going to, I will not shoot unless I see something or something, especially in that situation. I don't want to shoot one of those, those, creatures um unless it is threatening so fast forward to this year 2023 this happened about two weeks ago um uh, i was out coyote hunting and this is not a rural spot here in central ohio it's you know you drive down an old dirt road and there's cornfields everywhere um it's on a about a 300 acre plot um I get back and get set up and I noticed, you know, setting up, everything was dead quiet. There wasn't a sound anywhere. There were no frogs, no birds, no nothing. I mean, it was just eerily quiet. I mean, just dead quiet. Well, I didn't think a whole lot about it. I, you know, I thought it was kind of odd that it was real quiet, but I was like, yeah, you know, anyway, I get, get my gun out and I'm using a, uh, 22 250 with night vision get the gun out get everything all set up get my decoy set up and uh you know set it up i don't know 100 yards so i started making calls and you know doing doing the normal thing didn't get any response uh usually in this location i'll get I, i've actually had owls come down and attack my decoy i've had owls land right next to my decoy um you know, I've actually had owls pick up, try to pick it up and carry it off. Uh, so, you know, usually I've got some sort of activity, you know, fox, coyote, something. Nothing happened. And I, I thought that was kind of odd. But there again, you know, didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. And at this time, you know, it's, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night. And I hadn't hadn't heard nothing. I mean, no deer, no nothing walking nothing making any sort of sounds so i said well you know i went ahead and kicked over to a coyote locate call just to see if i could get any sort of response which if i didn't i thought that would be kind of odd just because the location that i'm at is just loaded with them so i switched over and uh about i don't know five minutes into this sequence or so i switched it off and i just sat there and listened and I don't know, five, let's say five minutes after I shut the call off, I hear something and uh, it's about a hundred yards off to my, off to my right side, which would have been about dead center of a cornfield. And I heard it in the, in the corn making noise. And I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe coyotes coming in or something's, something's out there. It was it's still just, eerily quiet just dead quiet other than this thing making noise in the in the cornfield and like i said spent my whole life in the woods so it takes quite a bit to rattle me it's not you know there's nothing in in ohio that you have to be really concerned about so i'm listening to this noise and then it everything got dead quiet again just silent and i heard something and i don't know what it was i i don't this is I've looked up other sounds to to try to compare it to. Well, this this sound came out of nowhere. It was it was you could actually feel it. I mean, 
I'm, I mean, talking from your toes to every stinking hair on your head, you could feel it hit you. And it ended up, it was a howl, but the howl that this thing let out was unbelievably deep. And I mean, real, real guttural. And it lasted for, I don't know, between eight and 12 seconds, this thing carried. And it carried a perfect pitch all the way through. And then at the very end, it sounded like it got even deeper. And and I've tried to recreate it. I can't. I don't know any human that could recreate it. I've listened to, you know, all different types of animals that could be in Ohio to see if there's anything that could even remotely come close to it. Um, even a wolf doesn't doesn't even scratch what this thing was. Uh, it was just like I said, just real deep, real guttural. It, it was it was bone chilling. And now mind you, I had night vision. So I, I, I was concerned, but I, I wasn't too concerned. Well, I stood there for about five minutes and about five, five minutes after this, I started hearing this noise in the field again. And I turned my gun that direction and started looking, you know, intently. I was paying very close attention to everything. Well, uh, I, I don't know, 10 minutes or so goes by and a fog rolls in to the point where I can't see more than 50 yards in front of me. I don't know if you've ever used night vision, but uh, at night, if fog rolls in, you you literally cannot see <laughs> very far at all. Um, that that kind of, you know, bothered me a little bit. So I stayed there and the sound had stopped. Well, I had thought, OK, well, either this whatever this was, was either exiting the field or just sitting there. So, you know, still with my gun trained that direction, you know, I'm, I start paying more attention. Well, all of a sudden I'm standing up against this section of woods on the other side of this woods, this, this section that I'm standing against isn't 30 yards wide. It, it butts up to a, to an old gravel road. So, you know, I'm standing up against this woods. Well, this noise ends up getting behind me and it ends up in there. There's a section of woods behind me, a dirt road, and then it goes to a great big cornfield. I don't know, maybe a 60 acre cornfield. Well, this noise started in, in the cornfield, like something walking, crashing through it. And, and I thought that was odd because it, it was, I mean, it was, uh, it was very well defined sound. I mean, it wasn't a deer walking through the rows. You know, a deer walking through the rows isn't going to knock corn stalks down. It isn't going to make, you know, all kinds of noise. Uh, so I stand in there paying attention to that. Uh, then the noise stopped. Well, I hear something on the road, this gravel road. I hear something sound like it's walking. It ends up behind me. Whatever this is ends up behind me. And, I, you know, talking about it's actually got probably every hair on my body standing on end. this again i got this overwhelming sense of something watching me and 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 i don't it wasn't the normal sense of something watching me like i said before where it was just this overwhelming sense it was not only something watching me but this sense of dread uh you know this sense of something's not right you need we need to go you know and and i was by myself i didn't have anybody with me if i'd have had somebody with me obviously you know uh Two people are better than one. And obviously, you know, if you're out in the woods with somebody, your courage goes up. You know, you get a little bit bolder because now you've got two people uh, th that are armed instead of just yourself. So I'm standing there and get this feeling. And. Uh, all the all, all the sudden out of the blue, all of a sudden I get this real deep, real guttural, just like a. I don't even know how to say like a like a huff almost. I don't even know how to explain it. Like a, I guess like it. It almost reminds you of like a horse, but it was it was just. I don't know how to explain it. I've looked for answers. I guess more or less what I'm looking for is answers on what this could have been. This this huff like a, just real deep. I couldn't, I, I can't recreate it. I don't know any can recreate it. It's, it scared the ever living crap out of me. 
So needless to say, I got, I ended up uh, packing my stuff up and leaving. And I ended up going back like two days later and I walked through the cornfield just to see. We did end up finding a bunch of corn that had been uh, knocked over. And I, and I mean destroyed. This wasn't coons. This wasn't deer. Uh, this was something walking through that, I mean, destroyed this corn. Um, and whatever it was, it, it was big because it, it was when you're, I, I'm sure you've been in a cornfield. And for those of people that haven't, it's, you know, you got rows through each corn that most humans, most people can walk down and not disturb any of the corn. Uh, this disturbed two rows. So when you're walking through the rows, I mean, it just knocked, I mean, just like a, like a, like somebody holding a great big stick walking through and pushing corn stalks down and breaking them. And, uh, that's pretty much my, my story. I don't know what it was. I guess I'm looking for answers. Uh, you know, and I wanted to share it. I wanted to get it off my chest. I haven't told anybody. I, I, I haven't even told people about, uh, the feeling of being watched that I've had and the noise that happened to me years ago, crashing through the woods. I, I didn't even tell people about that. I didn't even tell family. So I guess this is, this is my way of kind of getting it off my chest. After this happened it the second event here, the recent one after that happened, it's, it's actually, uh, we went back, actually I took my dad with me last night. We went back to that same location, uh, to hunt. And the the place actually had me sh so shook up that I ended up leaving half of my equipment next to my decoy, and I never do that. I, I've left I left my bag, I left bullets, I, I left a bunch of stuff laying beside my decoy because I was so just you know on edge, I guess. Um, you know, and that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. All right, Kyle. Well, I appreciate you sharing your experience with me. I appreciate you listening. I actually got a place to go. Uh, mm -hmm. I've listened to your stuff. I've watched your stuff and I find it extremely, uh, you, the way you do a lot of your stuff, it seems more, uh, I guess, along the lines of, of, of hunting as opposed to, you know, some of these other shows that go out and, you know, watch a hooting and holler. And I, I, I just, that, the way I see it, you know, this is an elusive animal, creature, whatever you want to call it. It stayed hidden for years. Uh, I just find it hard to believe that going out and hooting and hollering is going to really do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. But what you do, I've I've watched your killing fields. Uh, you know, I've watched just about every one of those. And, and you seem to be on the level, I guess. Uh, that's why I reached out to you as opposed to anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. And, um, I guess the reason for that is the way I got into Sasquatch was from hunting, fishing, camping, and just being in the outdoors. So that's kind of, um, the starting point for the channel, just because it all goes hand in hand. And, um, I feel like, I mean, I'm not trying to down any other channels, but a lot of people, um, will start a channel just because they're interested in Bigfoot, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Oh, it makes total sense. And, and and a lot of people and, and not trying to be disrespectful toward anybody else, but a lot of people watch that TV show, <laughs> Finding Bigfoot. Mm. And I, I, I'm, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't watch it. I watched it, too. I, I You know, anybody who has any um, interest in, in this uh, profession, I guess, or this field, anybody who has any interest has seen that show. Yeah, it's but entertaining. That's, and there's real people it, on it, the show, but... I feel like they hide a lot of stuff or don't mention a lot of stuff or focus on a lot of things that they should be focusing on. And I, and I agree a hundred percent and, you know, going out and I'm sorry, but hooting, hollering, uh, making all kinds of noise, you know, the, these, these animals, you hear these stories from people and 90% of the stories that you hear are from people who are hiking through the woods, you know, by themselves. If you're hiking and you're on a trail, you're not making a ton of noise. You know, you're not you're not walking through the woods and, and, you know, stepping on every stick that's there. It's it's usually 
hiking trail, usually, not always. You do have some people who do a bunch of hiking that go up in the mountains and stuff that I'm sure make their fair share of noise, but they're not out there with the intent of making that kind of noise. And I think that's what, what drew me to your channel is you, you've everything that I've watched, you know, your killing fields, you know, at night you set, you, you just sat there. You didn't go out and, and, you know, make a whole bunch of ruckus and stuff on those videos. And that really drew, drew me to you because here's, here's a guy who has all these experiences and, and legitimately has an issue or did have an issue. And, you know, here you went out and you listened, you let things happen naturally, I guess. Yeah. And I and, think and a lot of people that, can relate to that as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel that letting things happen naturally is your best chance of getting evidence on this, this, uh, this creature or this, you know, animal, you know, wh however people want to, or whatever they want to call it. Um, but my experiences with it, this last one shook me up bad enough. And, you know, the, the noise, the huff that I heard that was behind me wasn't more than 20 yards. And, and it was, I mean, you could feel it in your chest. I don't even, I can't even describe it. It's so hard to put into words. Uh, just this unbelievably deep and I mean, it, it's like somebody hitting you in your chest. I mean, you could feel it and <laughs> I'm not a good storyteller <laughs> by any stretch, but you know, this is, this is about the best way I could, I could describe it. Yeah. And have you ever found a comparison online? Anything that sounds similar? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So I have found I, I the ones that I looked up online at first, I thought possibly black bear. Uh, but because of the, the, the way that this thing howled at first and how deep it was, how long it lasted, uh, just kind of the whole nine yards I, I, I scratched that out. And the only reason I looked at bear was black bears. We do get them in Ohio every once in a while, you know, uh, central Ohio, though, down from Pennsylvania, uh, stuff like that. But the ones that I found online, the best comparison would have been the Ohio house from 1994. There was, and, and there was another video. I, I believe the video was titled, it, it was just a short video, uh, Texas cop hears howls or records howls in the woods or, or I forget exactly how it was, uh, labeled or titled. Uh, but there was one howl on that video that, that he had. Um, it was just somebody pointing a camera into the woods and, and recording these howls. The third howl on that video actually hit me so hard. My, my wife was standing there and I was trying to show it to her. And, it's, and we were just listening, actually. We were just kind of going through, eliminating sounds, you know, trying to find something that was even comparable. Um, the third howl that was on that video, the short, actually sounded so much like it. And it hit me, it, it brought me back to that place, back to that sound. It, it affected me so much that I actually, uh, my wife even noticed. I started breathing really heavy. I started sweating. <laughs> Uh, every hair on my arms was standing on end and that, that video is probably about the closest that I've found. Um, the, the Ohio house are from 1994 are really, really a good example of, of what I heard. Um, and like I said, I know, I, I know it wasn't any known animal. Like I said, I I've been in the woods my entire life. Uh, and it takes a lot to get me, to get me shook up, but, I mean, this actually affected me bad enough that uh, <laughs> even going out there with my dad, I'm 33 years old, even going out there with my dad last night, uh, I, I still, <laughs> uh, I was still shook up to the point where I ended up leaving stuff next to the decoy, which I have never done. Uh, you know, so I, I was just, my, my attention was elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I guess. And that's a good point why people don't get a good photo or video because when you're in the moment, you're not thinking about your device. You're thinking about your life and what's going on. And, um, d yes. Did you feel paranoid whenever they were stalking you? Very, uh, it, it, well, yes and no. I, I want to say it, at first, not so much because I just kind of, uh, 
I guess I kind of made myself believe that it was, it was a known critter, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that I knew what it was, but when it came into the second field behind me and then before it crossed the road, it was making enough noise that, that, yeah, uh, paranoid is, is, is a, a light way to put it the, like a, the, the, the intensity, the feeling of being watched, this overwhelming feeling of dread and, and danger, I guess, uh, you know, not knowing what's there and then having, you know, I had the howl incident right before they got behind me, right before this animal was behind me, the howl happened, uh, which like I said, the howl was bad enough in itself. And then when you've got something that comes up behind you, that's within 20 yards of you, you cannot see, you know, it's, and like I said, it was also odd that the fog rolled in this fog came in out of nowhere, out of nowhere. I, I, as soon as this was over, I called my dad and asked him, I said, is it foggy where you're at? And he only lives, you know, 10 minutes from this spot. And he's like, no, he said, uh, it's it's actually really nice. It's clear. Everywhere else was, was clear. That spot got foggy. I don't know why I can't explain it, Hmm, but I, I thought that that was, uh, that was a little odd in itself. Yeah. That's like a Bermuda triangle situation there. I've heard, um, a lot of pilots describe it gets really foggy all of a sudden before everything goes haywire. Really? No, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Now, I've never really studied the Bermuda Triangle, but uh, yeah, it was. I, and and it, like I said, it came out of nowhere. If if it was that foggy when I got there, I wouldn't have hunted uh, just for the simple fact. That with night vision, if I had thermal, it would have been different. But with night vision, that much fog, you know, you can only see so far. Mm-hmm. You're not going to. They like to move in the What's fog, it? probably. Well, I mean, it would make sense. Mm-hmm. It, it would definitely make sense. And the place that this happened, like I said, it's it's a 300-acre uh, farm that butts up to about 1,100 acres of, uh, I guess, uh, nursery. Oh, wow. Which they've got, they've got apple trees, pears, plums, you know, all that kind of stuff on this nursery, uh, which would make sense, too, as a food source. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, there's also a very well-known river that goes through there. Um, I'm not going to say the name of the river because I just don't want a whole bunch of people going down there. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I feel like they, um, I, that's one of their tactics though, to, um, induce paranoia and confuse their prey. And they usually move in threes or twos. Did, did you feel yeah. like there was more than one? Well, yes, yes and no. I didn't know. I thought that it was odd how, you know, it it went from one cornfield to the other, and I didn't hear it go from one cornfield. I I, I heard it in the one cornfield, but then when I heard it behind me, I heard it cross the gravel road, but that was when it came across over to my side of the woods. So I guess it would make sense that there would have been two. That would definitely make sense. Yeah, if there's one, um, there's usually more around. I always preach that. Well, and and uh, that even makes us a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't think of it that way. I guess in the moment, I I, I didn't look at it that way in that moment. And in that moment, it was, you know, train my gun that direction because I don't know what this is and this sound, this this hoof sound that i heard and i I don't know if it was a whoop if it was a hoof or what it was but like i said it 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 couldn't have been more than 20 yards from me and it was unbelievable i I don't know how to describe it i mean it's like getting hit with a with a shock wave uh from a bomb i mean it just it hits you like a ton of bricks and yeah being paranoid uh this feeling of dread this feeling of being watched. And, and, I, and when I say feeling, you know, people, everybody knows what it feels like to, to feel like you're being watched. This was so overwhelming that it took your breath away. I mean, it, it literally, it, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it just, it just took your breath away. And the only thing I could think of was get my stuff together and get out of here. And, and that's exactly what I did. And if I'd have seen this animal, this, this creature, you know, e- even if it had been aggressive toward me, if that thing can make that kind of a sound and and you make it to where somebody can actually feel it, 
I don't know that I would even shoot at it. I might, in a defensive manner, I might, but. I, you know, you hear these stories of people saying that like a seven mil mag when they see them on well, a seven millimeter might not be big enough. They don't think it's big enough. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I don't know what what you would end up doing in that situation if it came down to you or them. Yeah. And but, um, did at any point did you feel in danger like you could possibly go missing like something wrong? Oh, yes. Yes. That's that's the whole See, I'm not a good storyteller by any means, but that's the whole dreadful feeling, the dread feeling that like, because I've heard stories, you know, in the past, I, I, a lot of the stuff I've listened to, it seems like when somebody goes missing, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you've ever listened to Missing 411, mm-hmm. but there's when somebody goes missing, there's usually a bad weather event that follows. Uh, yeah. especially if they go missing in the woods or, or, you know, in the mountains, whatever, there's usually a, a weather event that follows. That's usually so bad that people can't, uh, you know, search, mm-hmm. uh, when this fog rolled in and this thing got behind me and made that sound. Yes. Most definitely. It, it, you felt like you know, you're in danger. Like, yeah, I could, I, I don't know if coming up missing really crossed my mind, but, but, being taken or something happening and yeah that's that's the whole dread feeling of you know something's not right we got to get out of here i got to get out of here because you know something's going to happen and i I, i'm i'm going to have no control over the situation gun or not i you know like i said i don't know how to the best way to explain it but i had to tell somebody and like I said, I've watched enough of your stuff and that's what drew me to you. was the fact that you don't, you, you seem on the level. You're not to an extreme one way or the other. Well, I appreciate that. And, um, I might have an answer for your experience and, um, okay. I had an encounter one time where I was having a lot of strange experiences on the property got to the point where I did get paranoid. I was questioning my sanity and I just didn't know what it was. I felt like there were trespassers watching me from the woods. And um, at this point I've heard strange whistles. I found strange things on the property as far as structures, you know, gifting. I didn't know what that was at the time, but I was investigating the area just to figure out what it was. And um, one day I was picking chanterelle mushrooms and I was walking out of the woods back to my place into the driveway. I wasn't quite in, into the driveway just yet. And as I was walking to my left, I thought I saw something, but I just brushed it off and kept walking. And then um, I looked back over and there was a Sasquatch that stood up. And I'm, we're talking about 30, 40 yards, not very far off in the woods. And um, this one was jet black, about six to seven feet tall. And... Um, its face just looked evil. I don't want to say that about him, but it just had this mean looking face and it looked like a gorilla. Its eyes were jet black and almond shaped, had long thin lips, a round head and its whole body and its face was jet black, but on its back, it had these white stripes and, um, it had two of them going from the shoulder blade down to about it above its butt and on its calf, each side of its calf muscle, it had these white patches as well, but I got a good look at it probably like five to eight seconds and it walked away just like the Patterson Gimlin film. It looked over at me like two or three times and, um, I just stood there. I was shocked and, um, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but when it disappeared into the Missouri woods, you know, I couldn't see it anymore and I couldn't hear it when it was walking. Like it was dead silent, but it was right there. And um, when it was gone, I was having a hard time believing what I saw. Like, oh, my gosh, you know, was that real? So the direction that he was going was um, kind of like around the property. So I ran back into the yard, ran to another side of the property, and entered in the woods in the direction that he was going. And I took one step over this old rusted barbed wire fence, and I was standing in the woods. I couldn't see anything, but I knew he was in there. And all of a sudden, I start hearing like it sounded like a buck but not like a deer it wasn't a deer 
And then I started thinking about it. I was like, man, this sounds like a horse. Like the lung capacity of this creature yes. sounds like a horse. Like whenever it's just like breathing out. And that's exactly what it sounded like. So when you said that, I was like, yes, that's what this creature sounded like. But yeah, what I saw and what made that noise was a Sasquatch. So you heard that same noise. You had all these experiences. You heard the vocalization. It sounded like a tornado ripping through the woods or, you know, something crashing through the woods. That's that's Bigfoot activity. That's what that was. And they are in that area wherever you're going in Ohio. And no, Ohio well, is notorious for Sasquatch activity. And it's scattered all around the state. And uh, that's uh, that, that just gave me chills. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I do know that, you know, growing up, yeah, we've heard stories, you know, the grass man, the Ohio grass man, you know, Bigfoot, Sasquatch. You know, there, I've heard these stories. And like I said, I've been in the woods. Actually, I've, I've hunted since I was eight. I didn't kill my first deer until I was 12. But I've been in the woods my entire life. Uh I've never, I, uh, I, I had that one experience, uh, standing in the woods. And like I said, sound like a tornado coming through, um, that experience, you know, it bothered me. It, it, it got to me, but it was so long ago that it almost seems like a dream. Like it didn't happen. Um, but this, when this happened, this shook me up and, and, you know, it's not that, you know, I, I could hear them. I could hear them walking. I could hear them doing things. And I guess what really got me was the fact that I knew there was something there. But it's it's almost like, OK, you said that when this thing walked away and you seen it, it, it didn't make a sound. It's almost like these things, they can choose whether or not you hear them. I, I, I know that sounds far fetched. That sounds way out of left field. But to me. It's, it's almost like they can choose to be loud and aggressive or they can walk through the woods and not make a peep. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, no, that makes complete sense. And that's how deer are elk, you know, like sometimes they can just sneak up right up on you. And then when they're in rut, they don't care. They're pretty loud. Yeah. Yeah. D yeah. Yep. Deer are the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the sound that I heard that's, that hoof sound or whatever it was. Yeah. It's lung capacity and the howl, the howl alone, it's lung capacity to be able to carry that, that exact pitch. And it was a perfect pitch up until the end to carry that as long as it did. I mean, blew my mind because I don't know of any human that could even come close to that. Uh, you know, even replicating, even just the, the base that was there to replicate the base. I it just, it can't happen. I, I don't know anybody that could do it. And then, and then to carry that tone for the length that it did. And then right at the end, like I said, it was real guttural, real deep. Uh, and then when I heard this thing get up behind me, that hoofing sound or whatever it was, it, it, it was like it hit. I, I don't know if you had that experience, but it, it's almost like at that distance, it, it's like somebody hit you in the chest. I mean, you could feel it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and it, it does, it reminds you of a horse. That's exactly what it reminded me of. It was like a horse, except deeper, deep, way deeper, you know, and way more aggressive. Um, but I, like I said, this was just my way to get it off my chest and, t and talk about it because I didn't know. I, I, I've told some people in the family, but I haven't told, uh, I haven't told a whole lot of people just because, uh, I'm not going to listen to the ridicule. Does your family go hunting in that spot? Yes. Are you go going yep. to go back to that spot? Not alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I don't blame you. No. It, it's affecting me for sure. Like, I always get my stuff ready. I got everything ready to go, and then morning hits, and I'm drinking coffee till the sun comes up. I'm like, man, why didn't I get out yes. there? They're probably running around, and it, it has affected the woods for me. It and yes, and it it had it, it has, um, you know I I'd be lying if I didn't say that you know whenever year you know, and it's ha it's hap it happens to me two or three times a year, I'll walk into the woods and and I won't even get into the woods and you get this feeling of being watched like something's there, and you know that just that alone sometimes that feeling is so strong that that it affects me, um, this the way that this happened, uh. 
yeah, I'll go back, but I ain't going alone. I just, I, I, I won't, I won't do it. Why put yourself in that situation? Yeah. Uh, they say you know, a lot of the buck movement happens from like 10 a.m. to like 2 p.m. <laughs> Keep <laughs> yeah, that in during mind. the rut. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, during the rut, you are right, and and I've got it down. You know, uh, <laughs> at at most of the places that I hunt, you know, everybody talks about the rut. Everybody says that all oh, you know you hear, like I don't know if it happens to you, but maybe three or four farms over from you. Uh, people are telling you that the rut hasn't happened and it's November 7th. No, I'm sorry. The rut has happened. You missed it. Mm-hmm. Or or it's going on now and you're not in the right spot. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I guess my point being is I'm in the woods enough that I've actually got it down to the dates, uh, the best day and time to be in the woods at, at a certain farm. Uh, and ever since I figured that out, which I've, it's probably been five or six years ago that I figured out you know, the best time to be in the woods, the best date for that section of woods. Uh, Cause I don't know if you know, but each, each section of woods has its own prime rut, I guess you could say, or chasing phase. Yeah. I uh, noticed that you can go like somewhere that's, you know, 20 minutes away and it's like completely different. Yes. As far those, as activity. Yes. So those uh, come into heat about the same time every year. Uh, if you're walking through the woods mid November um, and you see a bunch of scrapes on the ground and they're, they're the size of a paper plate or, you know, a dinner plate and they're bare to the ground, you'll see a ton of them. I don't know if you ever have, Mm -hmm. but I have usually what that signifies is that those are actually making those scrapes and, and that's to let the bucks know, Hey, I'm getting close. You count 10 or I'm sorry, you count 15 to 18 days after you find those scrapes you're going to come smack dab in the middle of your best rut. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, this is all stuff that I've done research on. um, But the past four years at this certain property, we have, between me and my dad, we have both killed our deer uh, between November 3rd and November 5th for the past five years. And, you know, I mean, that's just to prove that you can get it down to a day. You can get it down to a time. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it, it, it's like clockwork. Yeah. Normally, but, if it's Halloween, I'm hitting certain areas. And then, like, the first couple of days before rifle season and the first days of rifle season are pretty good around here. Yep. Yep. Now, see, we don't have a rifle season. Our our bow season goes uh, till like, the middle of November. It, it's strictly bow from september the end of september to about the middle of november thanksgiving the monday after thanksgiving our gun season comes in uh but you know that's just to say that uh, you know i've spent my time in the woods i've done my research i've i I feel like i know my the woods but when this happened and and i want to say that this what just recently happened to me probably affected me more than what that crashing and all that noise that happened to me years ago, the, the, this has affected me more. And I don't know if it's the fact that I heard the vocalizations, I heard, you know, this thing behind me. I, I, I don't know why it affected me so bad, but it did. And it's affected me, like I said, to the point, even going with my dad to that location, um, I end up leave. I, I, I I'm scatterbrained, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and I end up ruining the hunt just like last night because I leave stuff where I shouldn't. Yeah. And and that has never happened. And even my dad said to me, he goes, man, he says, uh, you know, th- this must've really got to you. And, you know, my dad's had his own experiences. Uh, they had something happen to him in a swamp one night, uh, fox hunting years and years ago. And uh, actually the guy he was hunting with, uh, I believe he actually, he got up, ran back to the truck and I don't think he went back out in the woods. I don't think he, he hunted a day after. Um, and, and they heard kind of the similar, a similar sound. Uh, they, their nickname for it is Grizz. Uh, but obviously, <laughs> there are no Grizzlies in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And, but, yeah, so this, this, I, this was just my way to get it off my chest and, and talk to somebody. Yeah, and I hope it helped. Um, 
did you ever look through the night vision and what type of night vision was it? So I have got an ATN uh, 4K Pro. It's a scope. Uh, yes, and I did look through the night vision. And uh, when I had the gun trained on the on the far field uh, where I first heard it, where the howl came from, I could see the edge of the field, but you can't see, obviously, you know, corn's thick enough, you can't see into it. Uh, now, if I had thermal, it might have been different, but with night vision, you're, you're not going to see into the field because it's so thick. Um, when this thing got up behind me is when the fog rolled in and I couldn't see, I couldn't see 20 yards in front of me. Um, I, I'm using uh, ATN 4K Pro as a night vision and my uh, my my light is a, uh, hold on, I got it sitting right here. It is a sniper hog sniper hog light and if it's clear or, or or halfway decent out oh i could see 800 yards no problem you know but when this thing got behind me this fog rolled in and i couldn't see nothing and i trained my gun the direction that this you know in into this little section of woods and i was scanning and then when i heard that that wolf sound or whatever it was uh that's when i had the gun that direction and was scanning that section of woods and then that wolf sound came and then this feeling of of dread that something's not right that you're being watched that just this this overwhelming sense of of terror i guess that something's going to happen you need to leave and uh, that's when i packed up and left yeah i don't blame you okay well, I think that pretty well answers most of my questions that I had typed down. Do you have anything that you would like to add or any questions that you'd like to ask? Well, so I guess uh, your experience with that sound, mm -hmm. uh, the woofing sound, have you ever heard a howl? Um, or, or anybody that has heard a howl, um, can anybody else explain it any better? Can Can somebody... I mean, because it, 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 like I said, it's it's so deep, it's so guttural, it's so just, I mean, so full of bass that that there's nothing that even comes close. Uh, and if anybody has any answers for even that, just I want to understand the vocalization, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I, I have and a have guest. You, have, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I have a guest no, that, no, uh, you're fine. that filmed a strange vocalization here in Missouri. Um, I can send that to you and you can check it out and see if it's anything like oh, what you heard that would be awesome um i can send you the videos the two videos that i found and i, I can send you the one video and try to crop it out and, and and get the the one that really the the one howl that really got me um that 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 is probably the closest i've found i i can send that to you uh, as well yeah send it on over and um Kyle, I really appreciate you getting in contact with me and taking the time to share your experience. I know it wasn't easy, so thank you. Yeah, and thank you for listening, and uh, keep up the good work. Yeah, absolutely, and if you ever experience anything else or need any advice, feel free to contact me. And, you know, that's one other thing, too. Uh, it seems like when somebody experiences one thing, uh, it, it almost seems like it happens uh, on a regularity or, you know, it, it happens on a regular basis, I guess. So somebody, it, it seems like a lot of the stories that I've listened to, somebody will have one experience and then it, it might happen again the next year or, you know, a couple months down the road, they might have another one. Uh, I, I've, which I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if that'll happen to me, but I think it would be pretty pretty neat if it did yeah it's a strong possibility and um you'll just have to keep your head on a swivel yeah, well, you can go worry about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's gonna happen here regardless because that like i said that uh that, that got me so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. all right well i appreciate it yeah it's no problem and kyle i'm gonna let you go and you have an excellent day sir Thank you. You do the same. Yep, absolutely. Take care. All right. All righty. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. 
All right, Kyle, I appreciate you for sharing your experience. And like I said, it sounds like Sasquatch activity to me, but of course there are other things out there in the woods. Kyle later shared a video of a Bigfoot vocalization he found on the internet, and it sounds very disturbing. It sounds like something you would hear on Jurassic Park. I have had many guests report hearing something with the lung capacity of a horse or animal of that size, if not bigger. Ohio is a hotbed for Sasquatch activity, but it has also been known for its strange archaeological past, such as the Serpent Mounds and other strange buildings from an unknown civilization. I have a feeling that all these ancient civilizations that we do not properly understand are somehow linked to the Sasquatch beings. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Thank you everyone for watching. If you can, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. So thank you everyone. Take care and be safe.